NATO is an organization primarily funded by and consisting of well-intentioned individuals who care about animals, who naively think that if they give money to the organization PETA, to the leadership of PETA, they will actually end up helping animals. That is quite different than the leadership of PETA, which in my opinion and in my experience is less interested in helping animals than they are in completely eliminating any association that humans have with animals. And so basically, no medical research, no agriculture, no farms, no rodeos, no circuses, no captive breeding programs, um, nothing with animals. No wildlife management, uh, no pet ownership, no horseback riding. They exist because Ingrid Newkirk is very good at marketing. They're very good at communicating to people, there's bad out there, give us money and we'll stop it. I just wanted to show you a couple minutes from our latest investigation. We just got out of there a few weeks ago. But it's an exotic animal dealer in Oklahoma who claims to rescue, typical story, claims to rescue big cats and primates and whatever and is actually breeding them. Oh, God. He's taking the butt of a gun here and hitting these tigers. Mm, hope he doesn't have an accident with that. Well, Do we have more than this? Because you know he's going to say, oh, that was an isolated incident. We have more. Oh, good. Have more. Thank goodness. Yep. I am deeply worried because we keep doing these investigations into exotics. And there's some, it's all worthwhile, it's all wonderful, and we need to close down every scumbag exotic facility there is. But the one thing that everybody needs to get involved in is empathy with, with animals they eat and don't think twice about, who are every bit in as much trouble, actually much, much more, than these bears and these tigers and so on. You know, Thanksgiving and the mass slaughter of turkeys is going to happen again, and nobody's going to think twice about it. I'll just be us on the streets again. We absolutely need an investigation inside a turkey slaughterhouse. I know. Or a turkey factory farm. Mm -hmm. Pe people have never been asked to bridge that gap. They've been allowed to get away with bad behavior because the broad picture isn't painted for them that no, all animals very feel, I mean, not just the cute ones with the big eyes, not mm -hmm. the fluffy bears and the smiley dolphins, but all the animals. Are we also going to have a typical campaign? I mean, are we going to produce materials? And if you such get really? your mail in, yeah, we'll, we'll have the whole again. nine yards. Okay. There comes a time when we decide there is a laboratory or there is a slaughterhouse where we must get inside and use it as an example. Our investigator will go into one of these facilities if they can obtain employment and start documenting, which means getting the video camera evidence, getting evidence with still photography, making copious notes. The investigator will try to find places where they should be so that they can record conversations, opportunities to see things that the public doesn't know is going on. Investigations are so important because nobody believes Nobody believes what you're saying. You can't just have words. You have to have pictures. You have to have video. You have to take them inside these places. No one is going to go behind the scenes. Who would want to, to go into these ugly places? It's much better for people to carry on with their habits if they never see the blood and the guts and the horror and the fear. We learned early on the image of the abuse. The image is the most powerful tool that we have. Who in the building knows what you're doing? Uh, Dan and Ben, mm -hmm. and that's all, so. Okay, I've been talking to Bruce about you for quite a while, and I know you're really valued down in the campaigns department, but we've got a big investigation planned. It's the ConAgra Slaughterhouse, and they provide Butterball with turkeys. Um, when you do your application, they're gonna ask you for references. Who do we have for that? I can put my father's carpet company that I worked at some years ago. Okay, so it's all it's all the truth. Right, right, all the truth. Yeah, yeah. with the exception that you worked for PETA. Yeah. 
when you have the camera situated where you want it, you're going to want it to not move, no matter how much driving or walking or, or actual work you do. It might be very vigorous, you know, physical work day, and we want that camera not to move. In this case, we'll be looking for violations of the state cruelty to animals statute and also for violations of the Poultry Inspection Act. You know that cliche, a picture's worth a thousand words? A video of what happens to animals is worth a library of words. I mean, you can have a library of books about how horrible it is for animals in slaughterhouses and animals in laboratories, but nobody's gonna read those books. When I was working in the lab, of course, I was working with rats and mice, so, you know, I was working with thousands of animals, which very well in a slaughterhouse you will be too. When I was working at Tyson, my job was a backup killer. A backup uh, killer? Right, I was like the last line defense as far as birds going into the skull tank a lot. There was a rotary blade that would cut the, the chicken's throats and whatever missed the blade, it was all on my shoulders to make sure that that animal was killed. The notes have to be made contemporaneously yeah. every night, every single night. When you come home? Just do it right away. Well, it depends, notes like, out. it depends on how, how good you are with your memory. My first thing was wanting to take a bath to get all the bacteria and everything off me and coming home covered in blood and feces was like the worst thing for me to have to deal with. An investigation to me is a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of commitment, a lot of effort and a lot of hope. We've yet to have one that has resulted in nothing. They go into these hell holes and bring out the video and what they show people has the potential to change the world. I lead a fairly simple lifestyle. I'm not really interested in a lot of junk material things stuff. It, it just doesn't fascinate me. I had a marriage and it was very lovely. I was married to a lovely man. Uh, I just, honest to God, didn't have time for it. I've never wanted children. I was sterilized when I was 22. Um, I read that there was a new procedure that was easy. And so I called up and said, can I be one of the first people to do this? I came to think that there's something wrong with wanting your own child, that there are so many homeless children in the world, so many orphans, that if you really want a child, why make a replica of yourself and your partner? I don't have animals. I travel all the time, and I don't miss not having animals because I believe that you should work to help them, not that you should accumulate them, possess them, and so on. I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God. I believe that the horrors in this world could not ever have been created by a loving God. I believe in kindness, I believe in personal responsibility, and I believe in being decent to people. This is a place where we had the back of a chicken uh, truck thing came open, and chickens just came tumbling out as the truck went down the road. About five of us came out here and caught all the chickens we could up and um, brought them back to the office and some of them went out to that sanctuary, the ones who were salvageable. Most of them weren't salvageable. Um, I'm sorry to do this, but we, I have to turn around. There's a dove that's uh, probably dead, but I have to have a look because I'd never trust that they are.